I never knew you, depart from me. This is probably the scariest verse in the Bible for many believers. But who is Jesus speaking to and why did he tell them to depart from him? We're gonna find out in this video. What's up friends, Jeremiah here. And today's video is gonna be a little different. It's gonna be more of a teaching video. And so before we get into the verse in question, let's talk about the context of this verse. This verse is part of a larger sermon by Jesus, which we call the Sermon on the Mount. And it takes place from Matthew chapter five to chapter seven. And in this sermon, Jesus talks about a lot of different things. In this particular context though, he starts off in Matthew chapter seven, verse 15 saying, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. So Jesus is not just starting off from anywhere. Remember when you're reading or studying the Bible that it wasn't written in verses and chapters. Everything was written as one document and the verses and chapters were just for reference. So you can't just start in the middle of a sentence or in the middle of a passage. You gotta read a little before and after to truly get the context of any verse that you're reading. Now Jesus has just finished talking about the narrow gate and saying it leads to life, whereas the broad gate leads to destruction. And this narrow gate is himself. He says that he is the gate in John. So Jesus talks about himself being the gate and then he says, beware of false prophets. So that's the context that we're dealing with here. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, the reason I read everything together is because when Jesus was speaking, he didn't separate it. Now, in my Bible, for instance, there's a heading that says, I never knew you right before those verses begin, but Jesus didn't put that head in there, right? So he's talking about false prophets, and then he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's the same context. This means that Jesus is not talking about a believer. A common misconception is that believers call Jesus Lord, but he would tell them that he never knew them, or some of them at least. But that's not what the verse is saying. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. So there's a distinction between those who just say, Lord, Lord, and those who actually do the will of the Father. And we're gonna to get to what the will of the Father is in just a second. But there's also another distinction. Jesus says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Now there are two possibilities with this verse. Jesus says, many will say to me in that day. What day is Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about the day that he comes back as king to rule on this earth for a thousand years. He's saying that many people will come to him in that day or on that day and say, Lord, I did these many things for you. And he'll tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Now, what would be the reason for someone to come tell Jesus that they did or they prophesied in his name or cast out demons in his name or work miracles in his name when he's coming back as king? Oh, well, because he's coming back to rule. People do not believe in Jesus today, but when they finally see him appear and they see that, oh, Jesus is real, Jesus is king, they're gonna try and come say some things. Notice that Jesus didn't say, many will prophesy in my name and I'll tell them I never knew you. He said, many will say, did we not prophesy in your name? We have no guarantee that they actually did those things. So number one, they could be lying, okay? Or number two, they did those things without faith in Jesus. Remember, even the magicians of Pharaoh's house could turn the water into blood and turn their staff into a snake. There were sorcerers in Paul's day who could work miracles and all these things, but none of these people believed. None of these people were followers of Christ. So it's not impossible for someone who does not believe in Jesus to work miracles or claim to cast out demons or do any other marvelous works that we might see and be like, oh, they're from God when they're truly not. And so it's either they're lying on that day when Jesus has come in his glory 
or they did these things but never believed in Jesus. And why do I say they never believed in Jesus? Well, it has everything to do with the will of the Father. Remember, Jesus made a distinction that there are people who say, Lord, Lord, who will not enter, but there are people who say, Lord, Lord, who did the will of the Father, because he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter, but except those who do the will of my Father. So let's find out what the will of the Father is. Okay, we're gonna read from John chapter six, verse 38 to 40. Jesus is speaking and he says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me. Okay, let's listen. That of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And then he says again, And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So Jesus doesn't just leave it up in the air what the will of the Father is because we can assume, oh, the will of the Father is for us to do this or do that. He's very specific as to what the will of the Father is. The will of the Father is that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him will have everlasting life and be raised up or resurrected when Jesus returns. That's the will of the Father. So if you're a believer, are you in the will of the Father? A hundred percent you are because you have seen the son you've heard the gospel and Jesus has been revealed to you through the gospel you have believed in him you have eternal life and so you will be raised up at the last day what does this mean for us it means the people that Jesus is talking about in Matthew chapter 7 are not believers because they did not do the will of the Father, they did not believe, they did not receive the Son, and therefore they do not have eternal life. If you have believed in Jesus, then He knows you. He's not going to tell you that He never knew you. In John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So this is what Jesus is saying about you, that you are his sheep, he knows you, and he has given you eternal life, and because of that, you will never perish. That's it for today's video. Kindly bless the like button if this video blessed you, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Right here is a video that YouTube thinks will be beneficial to you, so check it out, and I'll see you next time. God bless you.